Good day, and this is the 10 physics video for May 14th. And this is Mr. Weiss, and we'll be talking about analyzing waves today and their graphs, and a little bit about effects of resonance and forced vibration once again. Greetings. Hello. I've got Pia, Christina. I've got Amalia, Isabel, and Maya. And I've got uh, Christian. Very good, okay. A couple others are joining me, so say hello when you're new here, uh, new to the live stream, and I can give you points for showing up. That'd be great. For others, I realized that I forgot the bat assignment, so it's going up today. As soon as we're done with our live stream, I'll tell you more about that, but you will have ample time to do it. And I have, oh yeah, uh, our friend uh, Natasha. So welcome to our visiting friend, I think. Um, Tilly is here. Uh, Lucas is here. Very good. And actually, while we're taking roll, I'm gonna look back and make sure I know what we did last time. We did more of ear physics and we did the semicircular canals, I believe, as well. I've got Chelsea, very good. So I've got nine of you. So I might have everybody one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, I do. And Lucas K is here. All right, good. Thank you, Lucas. And welcome. That might be everybody so far. Yeah, let's go ahead and begin with a little review. So the uh, the ear, right, in addition to the hearing functions, also has semicircular canals that look like this, like this, and like this. First question is, what is the purpose of those semicircular canals in your ear? Just to warm up our brains a bit, okay? What's the purpose of the semicircular canals? And a couple of folks have a guess already. This is good. I've got from Tilly and Pia and Christian and Chelsea and Christina. All have the same guess, and that is balance, and that is correct. So then my next question is, why do we have three on each ear? Bum, bum, bum. Why don't we just have one on each ear? Can you think about why that might be? Why do we have three of these bogan, the three of these arcs um, oriented differently in each ear? Okay, got an answer, uh, need to be a little more maybe. It says three axes. Well, why do we need three axes, X, Y, and Z axes? What good is that? Okay, Lucas K is getting warmer for balance in each direction. Um, I wanna share a quick story with you, okay? On my way, I was just at school where I taught ninth grade for three periods. On my way home in the car, I was a couple of cars behind a um, um, moped, a uh, Vespa. And the guy turned the corner just like normal at the right and went down just like that, boom. Luckily he had a helmet on, but his head hit the pavement and it didn't look bad, but he just laid there 
And in my rearview mirror, I saw him getting up and he was really unable to walk. So clearly his semicircular canals had undergone of quite a lot of shock. Um, as you could guess, the planes, as Tilly's talked about them, the planes probably have to orient themselves again before that person, um, yeah, before that person has better balance. And by the way, that person, I hope, uh, someone called the, the medical people because they probably need to be checked out for a concussion in spite of the helmet. So if that ever happens to you. Good, got a couple others joining us. Uh, welcome to Leah. Anyone else, please let me know if you're there and I have not written you down yet. Okay. Let's start out with something kind of old and something new. And by the way, the, the again, the bat assignments going up today, I'll tell you more about that later on. But for now, I wanna do a couple of graphs with you. So let's see if I can, you can see me better. There's my whiteboard and let's try it out here, okay? All right, I wanna do a, a couple of graphs, one based, well, one graph for force vibration See if you can remember what that is. And one graph for resonance. Remember we have resonance in our ear, right? The little parts of the ear that vibrated. And before I do anything else, I got a couple more joined us. Good, thanks for saying hello. I've got Kellen here and Henry is here. Very good. Okay, so let's do the one for resonance because I'm closer to that. And the one for force vibration we'll do in red. And both of these are going to be the energy transferred energy transferred. I know this is barely going to fit transferred And this is going to be simply the frequency. of the, we're gonna call it the sender, the thing making the noise, okay? All right, now I know you can't see some of this, so I'm gonna tip back and forth, okay? So you can see this, I promise I'll do that. So on this side, energy transferred and frequency of the sender. Okay, um, right. And Maya reminds us force vibration is when an object forces another to vibrate at its frequency. Good. I've got some different force vibrate. I got some different uh, objects here. So not quite the same same natural frequency, but I can force objects to vibrate at the frequency I want. And we did that in lab with a tuning fork where I stuck the tuning fork onto this and I can make this vibrate. And of course, when I make a bigger surface vibrate, Thank you, Felix. I see you're here. When I make a bigger surface vibrate, right, with more amplitude, then I'm transferring more energy. So if I have a forced vibration, irregardless of what frequency I'm sending, the amount of energy is like this. It's constant. If it really is a force vibration, I'm sending energy depending only not on the frequency of the sender, but just the fact that it's connected to whatever object I want to make vibrate. For example, if I have a tuning fork, and I put it on here, then as long as the tuning fork rings, it's going to transfer energy to this at the same amount, at the same rate, until it stops vibrating. Okay? All right, see if there's any other comments from you. No, not so far. Resonance is quite a bit different. Okay. 
Let's review the cilia. Remember inside, well, I'll ask you, when we're talking about our ears and our hearing, the cilia were little hair-like features. Now this is a cilia. And they were located in what part of your ear? Where were the cilia found in your ears? And we'll see what that has to do with resonance, right? Where were the cilia found? Mm, I've got lots of answers, and they're all correct, including Amalia and Chelsea, Tilly, and so on. Good. It's the part of you we call the cochlea, the Schnecke in German, right? And I have lots and lots of these. Okay, so now pretend we can vary the frequency. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to call this energy transferred. And we're going to call this again the frequency, I'll, I'll abbreviate this time, of the sender. This time I want you to imagine, uh, unfortunately, a demo I have at school where I can change the frequency of the sound. So think of really low. Uh, until you get so high you can barely hear. Going through the whole range of the frequency that human ears can hear. Well. If I have my little cilia, it's going to, okay, and I see a person here, but I don't know who they are, so you'll have to identify themselves. Okay, uh, I see my cilia here, and as I start to sing, even if it's not the perfect sound for this one, which you can remind me of, I can transfer a little energy. But when am I going to transfer a lot of energy to this cilia? So I got a sound coming into your ear. Here's the cilia. When will I when will I make this cilia cilia really vibrate strongly? When will it be um, accepting a lot of energy from the sound? You'll see why this is important rather soon. When will this cilia be accepting a lot of energy? Good, I got some guesses. Ooh, and they're good and they're coming fast. I'm gonna read them. There's more energy transferred when it resonates. The yes, it, I hope you mean the cilia. When the frequency is the same as the natural frequency of the cilia. Aha, now we're getting right close. When you hit the node that has the same frequency, right? When the natural frequencies match, exactly, good. All right, Maya and Christian, good. So let's see what that means. Over here, I can vary the frequency and if it's just forced vibration, it doesn't matter. I'll pick something, let's say we got 40 Hertz. Remember this is in Hertz frequency, 40 Hertz up to like 400. And I'll do the same on the for the for the other one. So I'll say I'm starting with 40. That's within human hearing, right? And I'm going up to 400. Let's say this little cilia has a certain frequency, a certain natural frequency, and suddenly, remember, I'm plotting energy transfer. Suddenly, at, I don't know. Let's say it about what would that be? Maybe 150. Now I better move that over a bit, huh? Maybe at 150 over here. Suddenly I really accept a lot of energy. Whoa, boom. So a lot of energy is transferred as that cilia starts to go like this. Whoa, okay. Isabel, you got it as well. The sound matched the natural frequency of the cilia. But now, listen carefully, that's what, 150 hertz? And what happens if I go beyond there now? What's my graph going to look like? What's my graph going to do if I keep increasing the frequency of the sender? That's me. 
What's my graph going to do now? Mike is here. Welcome, Mike. Yeah, good. It's going to go down. It's going to fall back. It's going to uh, turn. Well, okay, turn. Yes, it's going to go turn and go back down. So now there's going to be less energy transferred. So even though, even though the sound is still coming, all right, I'm still making noise. Now it's gone back and probably what's happening all the time, if we can measure the cilia carefully, probably even the ones whose natural frequency is not matched are probably undergoing a, oh, you can see that, sorry. Probably undergoing a what? So what's going on here and here probably with the little cilia? Thank you, Christina. So they're undergoing a force vibration. But here, man, suddenly it's going crazy. It accepts a lot of energy. And that's the spot where we say, aha, resonance is occurring right there. And the natural frequency of an object. And we can use as an example our cilia, a cilia has been matched. Okay, and again, I'm gonna tip that a little back and forth so you see I don't have any surprises. Force vibration, just a small amount of energy. And this one, I probably don't have the same scale, you know what I mean? So this one, I could actually put it down here to make it the same. I'm not trying to make it any difference. At any rate here, I've got resonance right at that spot where I've matched the natural frequency of that cilia. And maybe that cilia, for example, that cilia has a frequency of 150 hertz. To be honest, I read that there's more than one. In other words, there are several cilia that have the same natural frequency. Okay, so don't think it's one for every hertz. There's a lot of cilia in your cochlea. Luca's is here as well. Thank you, Luca. Okay, I'm going to read folks that aren't here really quickly. So if I'm mistaken, let me know. So I do not have... I got a lot of you. That's great. I do not have an amelie. I do not have, I do not have a tail. I do not have a Lena. I do not have a Carla. I don't have a Helen or a Kira. So other than that, I got everybody. If some of those are here, say hello. If not, you can text them and get them online, okay? All right. Good. That should be kind of a review of force vibration with a little bit of ear physics thrown in. Yeah? We okay? Again, I'll tip. Make sure you got it. Good. Now, um, all that energy transferred can be a good thing or a bad thing, okay? So, um, I got a new thing to teach you, but I think I'm going to wait on this. Hold on. I've got a graph, but I'm going to look at that with a little bit with you. Well, obviously, one, one um, good application of resonance is we use it, right, to make our hearing possible. So cilia resonating allow us to hear. And I think we'd all say that's good.
Can you think of any other positive applications or any bad applications? When might it be good that something's resonating? When is it bad when something's resonating? I know that's pretty open. I'm gonna give you a minute to think about it. Kenny, okay, any ideas from you? Yeah, good. Oh, nice, I got some already. So bad, Tilly reminds us it's bad when buildings resonate during, I bet she's referring to your last assignment during earthquakes. Or if you had a really severe wind, theoretically, that could do it too. Really good. Okay. What else do we have here? Um, that was from Tilly. Chelsea, it might be bad if resonance caused violent movement and destruction. Yes, Chelsea can be more exact of exactly what. Yeah, good. Leia's got a huge one. I'm going to send you a video that I want you to watch. It's going to be like four minutes, so don't get all upset. And the four minute video has to do with the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, which was in 1941 when this was built. So bridges can be destroyed if they resonate. Thank you, Leah. I wonder if Leia saw that, that video. I bet she did. <clears throat> anyway, I'll put that in for all of you. <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> I don't want to take too much of the thunder away from this video, but things that can make a bridge resonate could be two things. So I'll say from A, B. Both have happened. Can you guess what? Um, no, you weren't supposed to see it. You're going to see it. I'm going to send you the video, not to worry. Okay. What could make bridges resonate? Again, here's a bridge. It's where the cars go or a train or something or people. You don't want it to resonate. What could cause it to resonate? Two things. Um, earthquakes, yain, actually earthquakes don't really match the natural frequency of bridges. Good thought, Christina, probably not a problem. Water, normally the water's below the bridge, Felix, so not really much of a problem. Christian has it, Christian knows about this example. So it's when soldiers march. I don't know when, Christian, you might know, yeah, but I think it's back in the 1800s. They had a bunch of soldiers doing like this, all in order, boom, 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 and they crossed a bridge, and here they go, boom, 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 all in a row. Well, this was not such a good idea. Guess what? All of that, and the bridge just went more and more, and it collapsed under the soldiers' feet and killed a bunch of soldiers. So from then on, what they tell soldiers to do is what's called break step. Break step means everybody walk at a different frequency and then you don't get resonance. Isn't that wild? So it changed how the military had to have soldiers go across bridges. Good, can you guess something else? Traffic, probably not. Good guess, but probably not. Something more, well, it's not so much in Berlin, more of a problem in Chicago, more of a problem on the west coast of the US. Starts with W. It's not water. Sometimes it blows. The wind. Thanks, Chelsea. Okay, so. And the Chel the Tacoma Narrows, you're gonna see that that problem. It's pretty scary. Okay, so 
You've got to build bridges carefully to avoid resonance. You don't want it. Okay, back over to the good side. I saw one from, um, it's gone out of view. Yeah, no, Leia had it. When musical instruments resonate. So resonance, resonance in musical instruments. Or I might add the voice. A lot of you in choir, at least you were in choir with Dr. Curtis. I almost wrote choir there for the voice. So voice or musical instruments, those resonating can be a pretty good thing. Any other things? Uh, no, okay, all right. Um, if you've been in a car or a train, resonance can be a real drag. We might've talked about this. But imagine this, okay? Um, resonance is good in microwaves. Yeah, probably. Probably, because um, you're making the molecules flip. I don't know if you're matching the natural frequency of the molecules to make them flip though, Christian. I gotta research that before I write it down. Okay, but here's another thing, okay? You and I are in the S-Bond, okay? Here's a window open. See if you've ever had this happen, right? The window's open, a little air coming through, all of a sudden it starts doing this. Ah, is that annoying or what? Okay, well, it's not only annoying, if it happens to parts on your car, it could be damaging. So resonance of parts can be a bad thing. So if you match the natural frequency of whatever it is, a muffler, exhaust pipe, part of a seat, whatever it happens to be, it's not a good thing. So resonance of parts of cars and trains, probably not such a good thing, yeah? Okay. Good. There's probably other ones here on the good side, but I, I can't think of it right at this second. That's okay. Let's go on to one of our goals for today. So I got to erase the other board. I can't take a picture of that one. And here we go. We're going to not put this up here. All right, I did this in pen, so I'm gonna like highlight it a little more so you can see some of the important things, okay? So I prepared for you. I just didn't do it in marker like I probably should have, but I'll rectify that now. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Oh my, that's beautiful. I love it. Okay, I better put that back up for a second. Whoops, I don't know how to get the light. Okay, Maya has a neat one here. It's not really good or bad, it's just fun. It's on lots of uh, YouTube videos, and it really actually can be done. A fun thing is when, usually it's an opera star, matches the natural frequency of a wine glass. I bet you've seen this in commercials. Did you ever think that they were making that up? You know what? They're not. A good soprano can sing loud enough, add a wine glass, match the natural frequency, and shatter it, right? So essentially, the resonance 
if I uh, can shatter a really nice fine wine glass. Not that you want to do that, okay? Don't do that with your folks as wine glasses. But it is pretty interesting with a good, strong soprano voice. Okay, thanks, Maya. Okay, here's my graph. So this is something new. We haven't done this before. We may not do it ever. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to hopefully get where you can see that. I think I'm going to hold a little closer first, okay? Let me show you what I've got. So I'd like you to try and graph this. If you have a squared paper, you do better than I did. And I don't have any here at home. So what I've got is from three to zero, and then essentially goes into negative numbers. And that's the centimeters of the wave moving up and down. So it's a transverse wave, okay? I should ask you that. And it's the plot of this wave over time. This we haven't done before. So imagine that over time, the wave is going through the water and at can you see that? Probably not. I'm going to wait all the seconds. One, two, three, four. At a certain number of seconds, there you go, different parts of the waves are passing. Imagine again that you're like a duck, okay, and the wave's going through you, or maybe that's not a good way to think of it. No, imagine you're on the wave. So here's the wave going, and the wave is going up and down, and up and down over time, okay? It's traveling across the pond, across whatever, if it's a water wave, right? Could be a light wave too, but this is a pretty short amount of time, so probably we're talking water waves. The time waves would be really, uh, the water light waves would be much, much faster. This is too much time, actually. Okay, so look at the questions I've asked down below. Can you read them? Probably not. I'll read them to you. It says, find the amplitude, find the period, and find the frequency of this wave just from the graph. Um, so my question to you is, and I think everybody can get this what was frequency and what is it for this wave what is no sorry no start again it's been a long day what is amplitude that's question a here a for amplitude what is amplitude for a wave and what is it for this particular wave okay see if you can figure out the amplitude look back on your notes if you don't remember what amplitude is Hmm, one person's got it. Let's see some others figured out. Try and guess before you look on the side. <laughs> yeah, three. Three what? Three centimeters. So it's a very small wave, isn't it? Whoa, it's only going up and down that much. So it's just a ripple in the water, isn't it? Yeah. So remember, amplitude was half the height of a wave. So for starting in the middle, the amplitude is either three up or three down, but either way, it's three centimeters in this particular case, okay? Right. All right, the last two are related. In Montana, we'd say you're gonna get a twofer. You know what a twofer is? Two for one. Okay, look at the other two questions, if you can read them. B says, what's the period? And C says, what's the frequency? So my question to you is, when we talked about waves and when we talked about harmonic oscillators, I gave you a formula that had to do with frequency and period. Can you find me that formula? Because I don't want to put it on the board before we do this. The formula that relates period with frequency. So look for that for a second. And I'm going to race while you look for that. Period and frequency. Look in your notes. We need that now.
Okay, let's see if somebody's got it. Yeah, Christian's got it. Okay. Yep. So the period, period is T, is the letter in physics, capital T. Frequency is F, or it's called new. And I told you I never use it, but I will write it here in case you get another teacher next year that uses it. Okay. I use F, but a lot of teachers use that symbol. It looks like a V. That's why I don't use it. Okay, so let's get it then from Christian. Thank you. And it's the period equals one over the frequency. Okay. All right, let's go back here. Uh, where did I put my thing? Okay. So what I what I need here is a relationship from you. Okay, uh, let's relate, let's review just a second, because I think some of you have forgotten this. Period was the time. For what? Period was the time for what? What's the period of something? What is period? One oscillation. Good. Time for one oscillation. Thank you, Maya. And now I'm going to add something because we're talking more about waves or one wave length. Okay. Now let's look back at our, our thing here. And Isabel, by the way, already had a guess. We'll see if she's right. Okay. We had a couple guesses. All right, two and a half seconds, 1.5 seconds. We're going to see who's right in a second. Let's take a look here. I want you to look at a relation. All right, so from, this is hard, I know, because you're at home and I'm here, but we'll do the best we can. From here to here would be one what? What do we call that for waves? From here to here. Or from here to here. It doesn't really matter. Or from here to here. All of those are one what? Good, a lot of you got it, including Pia, Maya. One wavelength. Okay, so what we really want is the time. So the period, the second question here is the time for one wavelength. So we can estimate here, but it's not at a real nice spot. So here's what you can do. Look at this. That hits at a beautiful spot. Can we count and see how many wavelengths that is? Okay, ready? So there's one up, one down, and one up, and then boom, right there is exactly four seconds. Okay, how many wavelengths is it out to four seconds? I know that's a funny question. How many wavelengths out to this perfect mark at four seconds? I'm getting a couple answers, okay? That'd be one wavelength, and basically, I think, Amalia, you got it. So one, one and a half wavelengths. So let's put that on the board for a second. So for us, we had 1.5 wavelengths. And that was exactly four seconds. Well, let's go ahead and do a proportion. You remember that from math class? So one wavelength, remember that's a symbol for wavelength, would be X seconds. Right? Yeah, you remember doing that? I hope so. I use proportions all the time. They're so easy. Anything that's in the same ratio we do in physics, right? So it's wavelength to time, wavelength to time. One and a half waves took four seconds. One wave will take X seconds. Okay, let's make sure everybody knows where I got that, okay? So there's one and a half waves, and that took exactly on this axis four seconds, okay? That's where I'm getting that. So you can do it too. 
So let's cross multiply. So I got 1.5 times x equals 4 times 1. Let's divide both sides by 1.5. You guys still remember how to do algebra after all this? Hope so. So 1.5. So I got x equals 4 divided by 1.5. And I need somebody to either do it mentally or grab a calculator. Some of you have this already. Like Isabel, I think she got it. Leah got it. Christian got it. So let's kind of do it. So it'd be, well, 4 divided by 1.5. Well, 2 go in there, right? Because that'd be 3. And then I got 2 thirds left. So it'd be 2 and 2 thirds. But we can't do 2 thirds. So how about we do 2.5? Six, 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 six. No, we don't do that either in physics. Let's round it, right? Two point. We don't do repeating though, Christian. We got to round it at some point. It's tempting, but we just don't do that. And, and, uh, the numbers I gave you had about two significant figures. So we're going to do two point. Thank you. Tilly's got it and Pia and others. So 2.7. Okay. And it was 2.7. What? Let's look back at what that was. Our X was in seconds. And that, my friends, is the period. So that was question B. Okay. So from our graph, you could have gotten that directly on a graph. So one cycle. 2.7 seconds, you can kind of estimate it, but if I do the four, because it's right through there, it is more exact, and I like to do that whenever I can. But I could have just looked here and said, that's about 2.7. Maybe I could have just used the graph to get that. Good, now let's use the formula that Christian gave us for the last thing, okay? I'll make a little room here. And part C said, what's the frequency? And uh, Christian gave us the formula period equals 1 over F. Or I could flip that, right? Because I want the frequency. Can you still see that? Yeah, you can see that right over here. So the frequency would equal 1 over the what? Frequency 1 over the. And thanks to Henry and Lucas and everybody working these with me. I appreciate it. Okay, so one over the one over the period. Thank you, Pia. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug it in. So for part C, it's one over, well, the period we got 2.7 seconds. And now I need you guys to find that button. Well, no, I guess it's just division. Just divide it on your calculator. It's going to be some decimal, right? So I need a number from you. Round it to maybe a couple of spots. It's going to be less than one, so it's going to be point something or other. So find that for me. One divided by 2.7. Can't do that in my head. You can get a calculator for that one. Thank you very much. Okay, so 0.3, is it 0.36 or 0.37? How are we going to round it? So 0 0.3. Let's have a couple others do it and round it. I got half of you saying three and half seven, or half six and half seven. Now I got several sevens. Okay, so round to seven. Good. Someone else give me then the, wa the uh, wavelength. No, give me the label, the Einheit, right? So 0.37 what? 37 what? Oh, although one person whose name starts with an F got it already. Super, yes, indeed. And Felix and others got it. It's Hertz. H Z. That's a very, very low frequency wave, isn't it? Good. 
Okay, let me look on my review sheet. I think we're up to where I want. Uh, thanks, everybody. Good. Lots of people got that uh, got that right. Let's begin with something now, and we're going to continue with it next week. And it's about the most important wave of all. What might that be? Let's see. We've done sound waves. We've done water waves. What important wave have we kind of ignored up until now? Ooh, Amalia's got it. She's fast on the draw. Thank you, Amalia. So we're talking about light waves. If you take Leistung's course physics or AP physics, and I hope a lot of you take one or the other because you're a good group, you kind of need to know something special about light. And that is, it all travels at the same speed. First off, Let's consider what kind of light we got. I'll show you something next week, but for now, let's just consider. We know we got visible light. What other kind of lights are there? Could you like type in a few types of light? So visible light, that's the kind you and I see. What are kinds we can't see, but are also types of light? And we got some already. Good. Ultraviolet light. UV, right? UV. Ultraviolet light. Infrared light. We'll look at some application of all of these too, what they're used for. Good. Ultraviolet, infrared, any others that you know about, a little more exotic maybe, that are also types of light. UV and infrared are very close to visible light. Let's get to some that are further away. One of them, a neon light would still be visible light, Lucas. So it is a type of light, but it would be something we can still see. Well, there's one that you can cook with. It's so another one you go to the doctors and they use. Yeah, there we go, x-rays. Ooh, good one, gamma rays. You might add gamma rays last year, ninth grade, can physique, right? Nuclear physics. And beautiful, Leah, thank you, radio waves. And those are a lot of the main ones. Plus the cooking one, anybody got that? Yeah, Christian got that, microwaves. Yeah, these all, believe it or not, are types of light. And they all travel. At the same speed. Loss we're talking about in air or a vacuum or something like that. Loss we keep the same medium, then they travel the same speed. Now, what speed is that? And I got a funny, sarcastic answer if nobody gets it. They all travel at the same speed. What speed is that? Good, some of you got it. Oh, dynamite. Yeah, how do you know this stuff? Christian and Leah, I'm impressed. Okay, they travel at the speed of light. Or light speed. And the lettering physics for that is a little tiny C. It's a little tiny letter, uh, Pia knew it too, but it's a really big number, okay? It's three point O times 10 to the eighth. Oh, it doesn't sound that big until you put the label on it. Meters every 
second. Well, let's make that a regular number, ready? Three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that right? Times 10 to the eighth. One, two. All right, it's getting too late in the day. No, I need one more. So it's 300 million meters every second. 300 million every 1,001 every second. That's a whole lot, okay? That's a whole lot. How fast is it? Let's do a couple of neat things. Maybe you know some too. I'm gonna to give you one that I'm pretty sure of. For light to travel from the moon to earth, what you and I call moonlight, that takes two seconds. I gotta Google that. I think it's right, but I'm not sure. The other one, I'm pretty sure. Let's see if somebody knows. Oh, nice. That's the one I was good. Good, good. Christian's got another one. So to go from, from the sun, so sunlight to earth. Thank you, Christian. It's eight minutes. So if the sun suddenly went out, you wouldn't know it for eight minutes. <clears throat> okay, not a fun thought, but hey, you got eight minutes to enjoy it, right? Weird, huh? Um, the nearest star other than our sun is about five light years away. Let's talk about what a light year is. So other than our sun, our sun is a star too, of course. We just don't think about it because we're spoiled because it's such a nice one. So distance to the nearest star, maybe it's like 4.8 or something like that, light years. Okay. Light's kind of cool because it's a thing you can just sort of wonder about because it's so much fun. So distance, can you read it? To the star other than our sun, 4.8 light years. Again, it's close to that. I'd have to Google it and see. Um, yeah, good. So Leah says the truth here. So a light year, it's actually a measure of distance. It's not a measure of time. So it is a distance. Let's see how big a light year is. Can we do it? Mm. Whoa, wait a minute. Our time is over, gang. You got to tell me these things. Okay, we'll talk about what a light year is next time. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to run over. I was just having too much fun. Holy moly. Okay, I thought that was a zero. So thanks. Um, next week, we probably won't meet because we've got holidays. So I'll try and pick a reasonable date again for us to do a live stream. It'll be during one of the class times we have, but probably not next week, okay? And I'll put the bad assignment on as soon as I'm done here. And it's 4.2. Thank you, Christian. So I was close anyway. So we'll see you when we see you. I'll give you a date for the next live stream. Bye. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for participating.